country is sweet. Second place. But I have got a crane. Is waterproof. Oh, good. <laughs> so if there's any little accidents, <laughs> don't you worry. Yeah, we right. have a huge problem. We need some more propulsion because we can't use the engine because that will just spin the wheels. Right. Oh, no! I've got a Porsche ambulance behind me. Come on, get out of my way! I'm coming through in a Porsche... A burning mini. Carnage. Coming yeah. down on its roof. Venting. Red. White. Number five. Convertible lorry. Buckle up for a wild ride because we're driving into one of the most outrageous car modifications from the legendary Top Gear Burma Special. Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May embarked on a wild adventure across Burma, or Myanmar if you want to get all official, to Thailand. Sounds like a recipe for chaos already, right? Now while Jeremy could have settled for any old vehicle, he decided to up the ante and roll out in style with an Isuzu TX. But hold on to your hats, folks, because that wasn't enough for Mr. Clarkson. Oh no, he had grander plans in mind. Enter the pièce de résistance, Jeremy's sports lorry. Yep, you heard that right. He took a worn-out lorry and transformed it into a convertible beast. Bam! I've got the same 6.4-litre Isuzu straight six diesel as Jeremy's and probably James's. Beer wheel drive, twin exhaust, BMW 325i and this. Almost identical. Oh, yes. This is gonna hurt. You're gonna have to rev you hard. Can you imagine the audacity? Now, this isn't your ordinary lorry anymore. It's sporting a sleek white paint job with bold blue Shelby esque stripes, giving it that extra oomph. But wait, there's more. Jeremy didn't just stop at the exterior makeover, he went all out with the interior too. Luxurious living accommodation, decked out in the same snazzy white and blue scheme. It's like a rolling penthouse suite on wheels. And if you think that's not enough, brace yourself for the piece de resistance. A fake 6.3-liter AMG badge proudly displayed on the front. Because why not add a touch of flair and a dash of deception to the mix? So there you have it, folks. Jeremy Clarkson's sports lorry, a true marvel of automotive ingenuity and sheer audacity. It may not be the most practical vehicle for traversing rugged terrain, but hey, who needs practicality when you've got style for days? Now, <laughs> wait, it's gone bigger. It actually looks quite forlorn, doesn't it? We need a name for my bear. Um... Oh, victory is sweet. Second place. But I have got a crate. Number four, homemade limousines. Hold on to your seats, because we're diving into one of the wackiest challenges ever seen on Top Gear, the homemade limousine showdown. Jeremy, James and Richard are tasked with turning everyday cars into luxurious stretch limos. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, right? Well, you bet it was. First up, we've got Richard Hammond, who decided to take a 1996 MGF and give it the limo treatment. But wait, there's a twist. The whole darn thing is convertible. Yep, you heard that right. So not only did Hammond extend the chassis to make it longer, but he also made sure you could enjoy the breeze while cruising in style. Next in line is Jeremy Clarkson, who chose a 1992 Fiat Panda as his canvas for creativity. He stretched that little panda a whopping seven feet longer than the legal limit. Here it is, my sports limo. Proof that style does not have to be slow. That's it, that's perfect. You see, yeah. straight around that very tight bend. You see, now a normal limousine wouldn't go around like that, would it? Let's do another one. It's all about choice, OK? At the front, it's a sensible Swedish Saab 9000. Here's a Top Gear top tip. Rent one of these, 35 quid a day. For someone you don't like very much, cut their car in half. Talk about pushing the boundaries of engineering and sanity. But hold on to your hats, because James May took things to a whole new level. He concocted what can only be described as a Frankenstein's monster of a limo. Picture a mashup of a 1994 Saab 9000 CSV6 and a 1996 Alfa Romeo 164. Yes, you heard that correctly. He christened his creation the Salfa Romeob, a fitting name for such a monstrosity. Now, I won't spoil the fun by revealing who made what, but trust me, watching these homemade limos in action is an experience like no other. From dodging paintball attacks 
to attempting the dreaded three-point turn challenge. These DIY limos faced it all. So if you're up for a wild ride filled with laughter, chaos, and a hint of automotive madness, do yourself a favor and tune into this unforgettable episode of Top Gear. You won't regret it. That, that Never a, before bred in captivity. That is a big panda. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound good. That's... Genius. This time, once and for all, I am going to win. I shall be victorious. It's a sporty and stylish Italian Alfa Romeo. What kind of paint thinner were you sniffing when you thought of this? That's... Number three, Rover James. Let's talk about the tale of the infamous Rover James, a creation that's sure to tickle your funny bone and leave you scratching your head in equal measure. In one of the more, shall we say, eccentric endeavors, the Top Gear trio decided to take a humble Fiat Multipla and give it a makeover fit for the elderly. A Fiat Multipla is stripped of all its doors, adorned with oversized bus mirrors, strapped to the sides like some kind of automotive Frankenstein's monster. But wait, it gets better! Or worse, depending on your perspective. The interior was transformed into a minimalist paradise, featuring an overly simplified speedometer that probably had more charm than accuracy and a GPS system that only knew how to navigate to stereotypical destinations like the nearest hospital or bingo house because, you know, priorities. Oh, but we can't forget Jeremy's stroke of genius, the parking area finder, because what's a Rover James without a little touch of absurdity? He's waterproof. <laughs> so if there's any little accidents, don't you worry. And Hammond insisted I show off his new parking sensors. Just keep going. Yeah. Going. Fucking ah! again. There are a few things we need to address. There's the, well, obviously there's the waterproofing. And just to add to the chaos, there was some rule about not being allowed to go in the wrong direction because, well, why make things easy when you can make them hilariously complicated? So there you have it, folks, the Rover James, a testament to the boundless creativity and perhaps questionable sanity of Clarkson, Hammond, and May. It may not have been the most practical or sensible creation, but it sure did leave an impression. Just don't ask us to navigate anywhere in it. We'd probably end up at the nearest bingo house. But you know there's no bumper on the back. Just keep backing up. Ignore the noise. Pretend you can't hear that at all. There you go. You idiot. What? Well, it's ruined! And this is the car that we've... What um, is she it's... called? No, well, this is the James. Called the James. James! Uh... Hold on, if we carry on along here, we'll have to get on the motorway. Yes, I know, and that... Number two, Ski Jump Mini. Hold on to your hats, because we're about to dive into one of the wackiest Top Gear experiments yet. The Ski Jump Mini. Yep, you heard that right. A classic Mini, but with a rocket strapped to its back. Can you imagine the madness? Now, the concept alone is enough to make you do a double take, but trust me, it gets even wilder. This whole shebang goes down in the Winter Olympics special episode of Top Gear, and let us tell you, it's a roller coaster of insanity from start to finish. Picture Clarkson, Hammond, and May gearing up for the ultimate test of automotive absurdity. They're not just content with playing it safe on the icy slopes. Oh no, they've got bigger fish to fry. But that's weight component down a plane because it's on a slope. So we need to get the mass of the car. We need to know the angle of the slope. There we right. have a huge problem. We need some more propulsion because we can't use the engine because that will just spin the wheels. Right. Two, one, initiate. Cue the rocket powered mini hurtling down a ski jump defying all logic and reason in the process. But wait, there's more. In true Top Gear fashion, they don't stop at just one outrageous stunt. They also decide to dabble in a bit of ice hockey because why the heck not? And get this, they're not using any old hockey gear, they're using a Suzuki Swift as their makeshift puck. Talk about taking things to the next level of absurdity. So there you have it folks, the Ski Jump Mini a testament to the sheer madness and ingenuity that is Top Gear. Trust me, you'll want to buckle up and witness this spectacle for yourself. It's a ride you won't soon forget.
We can't put a driver in it because obviously he'll be killed. So we're going to have to work something out on steering that can be your job, OK? A burning mini. Carnage. Coming yeah. down on its roof. Venting. Red. White. So let's work this out. Mini does 0 to 60 in what? Uh, about 14 seconds. No, about... no, hang on, that's not going to be very relevant, though, is it? <laughs> this brilliant <laughs> scam! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that, though? Number one, Chevy Ambulance. All right, folks, gather round, because we're delving into one of Richard Hammond's most outlandish creations yet, the Chevy Ambulance. In a classic Top Gear challenge, our trio of automotive adventurers set out to outdo the government's own ambulance. And let us tell you, Hammond went all out with his Chevy G20. You know, the one that brings back memories of the A-Team. On the outside, Hammond's creation looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, a nuclear waste disposal van to be exact. But don't be fooled by the exterior, because once you step inside, it's a whole different story. We'll now drive each of your cars around the track, which, to make it more real, has been fitted with three speed humps. What's a daisy? That would have been deeply uncomfortable for Hammond. Oh, no! I've got a Porsche ambulance behind me. Hammond, get out of my way! I'm coming through in a Porsche! Despite the intimidating exterior, inside you'll find all the trappings of a traditional ambulance. A bed, medical equipment, the whole nine yards. It's like stepping into a bizarre blend of Mad Max and ER. But here's where things get really interesting. Hammond, being Hammond, couldn't resist adding a little extra flair to his creation. And by flair, I mean a nitrous oxide button. Yep, you heard that right. Not only does it give the 5.7-liter small-block Chevy V8 some extra oomph, but let's just say there's another, shall we say, creative purpose for it that's best left unspoken. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.